going to be a um, just slight addition to uh, the pricing lesson. I just want to go over the assignment. Uh, hopefully this will be helpful. Um, so it's assignment number five to price a garment um, due next week on Monday. And the objective is, of course, a fashion company's success depends on a successful pricing strategy. Um, and of course, success is very monetary, so we can still create beautiful designs, but if we do not have a uh, successful pricing strategy, we we'll, won't we'll be making enough money, um, and no matter how good our designs are, uh, we might go out of business. So it will be your task to design a garment, source materials for, and price that garment. So this garment should use the fabrics that you sourced last week in, your la in the last assignment, fabric sourcing. So this will sort of tie into last week's assignment. Now if you do want to choose a, you know, a contrast fabric or something else that you didn't put in your uh, fabric sourcing, you can just, um, you know, just to make it easier since you've already done your sourcing and your pricing out, um, it's just a little bit easier from, to go from one into another. But again, if you do want to make a slight adjustment, go ahead and do that because you're going to have to go ahead and put some information about your fabric on your cost sheet anyways. So you're going to design a look, uh, choose fabrics for that look from, of course, your fabric sourcing assignment, and estimate the costs associated with the production of that look by filling out the provided cost sheet. And we're going to go over that in a second. Then you're going to determine a final wholesale and resale price for that garment based on a markup strategy that will align with um, sort of your price point, customer, and market. So let's go over the requirements, of course, design a garment that's easy, just one singular garment though, not a whole look, because when we cost out different items, we cost out just one singular garment, not a whole look. Um, it should use, of course, fabrics from your fabric sourcing. Uh, Assignment. I don't know why I have a two in there. Let me just correct that. Uh, sketch the garment out, flat or design, doesn't really matter to me. Typically on this sort of cost sheet, we'd have a flat style sketch, but if you want to do a design style sketch, that's fine too. Include this sketch with the cost sheet um, and answers or separately. So a lot of times people have a little bit of trouble attaching their sketch directly to the cost sheet. Now, of course, in the industry, it would the cost sheets would all have sketches attached directly to the cost sheet. But if you're having a, uh, a little bit of trouble attaching it to your cro um, cost sheet, you can email it separately as an attachment um, or put it in with your answers section. Um, or if you get it in that cost sheet, that's just fine as well. In fact, it's most appropriate. Uh, and then you're going to go ahead and fill out the cost sheet um, and estimate the total cost of the garment by, of course, and we'll go over um, this section when we go over how to fill out the cost sheet. Now, once you've completed the whole cost sheet and found out the um, markup costs um, or, the full, uh, or the full labor cost or the full cost to produce for your garment, you're going to go ahead and answer the following questions. One, what price point are you working for? Two, what is your market? C, who is your target customer? Um, four, what is the value proposition of your garment? E, how did you estimate your labor costs? F, I forgot to <laughs> counting, <laughs> switch from numbers to letters. Anyway, um, is, uh, what is the total production cost of your garment? What is the wholesale price of your garment? What is the retail price of your garment? Okay, so these will be right on your cost sheet. Um, and now, what pricing or markup strategy did you use to determine these final prices? So pretty much, what was your markup percentage? And how did you arrive at that conclusion? Okay. So this uh, a fillable cost sheet in PDF form will be posted to Blackboard um, that we're going to go over next. And you may uh, print out and fill uh, print and fill out the PDF by hand if you so prefer, um, or use Adobe Reader, which is free, to fill out the form. Cost sheets filled out by hand must be scanned or photographed and sent back. And cost sheets filled out on the computer, of course, can just be saved and sent back. Just please. Um, uh, it is a lot easier for me if you put your name and the assignment uh, title 
in the file that you send me. It saves me some precious sec uh, seconds having not having to rename all of your files. Students can use any text they prefer to answer the questions, just the separate questions of the assignment. So you want to do a separate Word document, or you can even just type it in Nemo. doesn't matter to me. Um, so however is easiest for you guys to get me this information is perfectly fine. Um, so let's go over the cost sheet. So this is what the cost sheet looks like. And you're pretty much going to kind of just wing a lot of the stuff up here. You're going to make up um, a company name. You're going to make up a style number for this garment. And by now you should know what a style number is, so I'm not going to describe what it is or what it's used for. Um, description, obviously, should relate to a description of the garment. A season, of course, that's obvious. Pick a season appropriate to the design that you made. You can do the selling price, that'll be retail price, that'll be after you figure out everything else. Uh, size range, so the range of sizes that you're going to offer it in. So 0 to, to 12, 0 to 14, whatever that might be. The colors that it's going to be offered in. Um, and you don't have to really worry about your markers or anything like that. Uh, that gets into um, more complicated stuff that we'll actually talk about later when we get into cutting the, the fabric. Um, but you know, and date, you can just put today's date in. Okay, the first part, so you see I've already sort of started it because I put in my sketch already, which might look familiar to anyone taking FD25. It was the JPEG I had on hand, um, or closest at hand, I should say. So we're gonna, I'm gonna do it for this garment. Again, you're gonna design your own. This is not gonna come with the picture. You're gonna design and have your own uh, uh, garment. And I have my material down here, so just a sort of silly, fun banana print. Um, so I'm going to go up here, and I'm going to start to fill out my materials. And again, I have all of the uh, detailed information about this on my fabric sourcing sheet, so I have, um, I know every little thing about it, like how it is 100% cotton, it's very lightweight, so it's only 3.14 ounces a yard, so it has a width of 58, it's a poplin style weave, so on and so forth. Um, so when I come back to my cost sheet, I can go ahead, now you won't have to add text, I'm just in editing mode, so when I put in my material, it can be like, I can name it banana poplin. And all that other good stuff is already in my fabric sourcing. And I'm going to estimate a yardage amount. Now this is it has no sleeves, just a little collar, so I might estimate it at, let's say, one yard. Oh, it's quite so light, but again, hopefully you won't have this issue because you won't be working in edit mode. Now, what's the price? The price per yard was about is uh, about was a wholesale. And again, you might get different breakdowns if you got different breakdowns for amounts in your fabric sourcing. That was great. That means you really were looking at wholesale. So let's say I'm doing a very large run of this. So I got a good deal on my fabric, and it's only about three dollars a yard. And so now, what I want to do is I want to multiply my yardage by my price, and of course one times three is simply three, so very easy, three dollars, okay? Now um, I don't have any other materials here, trimmings of course because I've got buttons. Do you have some interfacing for that button placket? So it might only be let's say um, quarter yard. So not very much at all. And that quarter yard, again, interfacing is not very expensive. So let's imagine that the price for our interfacing is maybe only a, a dollar a yard. Again, yours should be easier to fill out because you won't be in edit mode. I'll have this all 
kind of figured out. Um, and so our total cost for the interfacing for this garment, of course, will only be 25 cents. So let's go down now and think about the trimming. So we have our buttons. I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 buttons. So I have a quantity right here of 14 at a price of, and again, um, if you have any other sort of materials like this that you didn't research wholesale prices, just click on over to the internet and you can see that, you know, I'm going to try to keep this pretty low in cost. With the bananas, it's kind of silly. It's not so formal. Maybe a younger customer, cheaper price. So I'm going to look at some pretty cheap wholesale prices um, and see that um, I can probably get a cheap wholesale price on buttons for maybe one to two cents a button. So let's pop on over to our cost sheet. And so 14 buttons at, let's say, a cost of two cents each. at our good wholesale prices will be there and that'll give us at a cost of um, 28 cents for the buttons. Now I don't have any other pads or zippers or snaps or whatever else. I might have a label in back, of course, a size, a brand name, things like that. I might need hang tags um, if I'm going to sell this at retail. And I might be sending this on hangers, so on and so forth. So let's say um, in labels and poly bags, um, we'll have um, one label each, you know, with the quantity, whatever. Um, you can sort of just, you know, it's sort of assumed that it's going to be one so you can put in, especially if it's um, a poly bag and a label together, we can sort of group that cost together. So let's go ahead and put that cost at, you know, for a label, oh, I don't know if it's embroidered or nice, maybe five cents. Right there, and again, it's only one because we have got one label right there. So one at five cents, so that's an extra five cents to our cost. And hang tags, maybe another five cents. So should I have well, we go. I should have one too, but doesn't matter. And Again, another five cents over here, so on and so forth. Okay, so now that's all of our material costs. Let's go down and um, assume, you know, any other stuff too that you might think maybe either a promotion or outside consulting with a design or any kind of R&D would be outside services and you might put it down here. Again, that's going to depend on your look. This is a very simple look, it's kind of silly. Um, if you're doing a highly technical, you might need some outside services, um, some spe special um, R&D for materials research, depending on what you're gonna do, so on and so forth. And hangers, let's say we're shipping them without hangers. And size tickets, let's say that's included in our label cost up here. Uh, cutting um, for one garment, um, it's not a ton of pieces. So let's say the total cutting cost is simply going to be maybe something like um, $2. And again, this is going to be a little bit of a cheaper garment because again, it's, it's kind of silly fabric. It might be for a younger um, customer and a lower price point. So I'm going to keep the sewing, we don't have a lot of, I mean, the, the, the collar and the button placket is a little bit more complicated. Um, so let's say maybe $7. And then over here, we did have to 
get it graded and we had to mark it um, so I'm going to divide up that cost and just tack another dollar on to my singular garment cost to take care of oops, both our grading and um, our marking. Now since we haven't gotten to mar marking is basically, you know, we'll, we'll take a bigger look at uh, marking when we get to it, but grading and marking, uh, just really quickly, grading is altering the pattern into all of its different sizes. So if you have a larger size range up here, you might be using a larger price for your grading here because there's simply more work to be done. You graded it into more sizes. If you have a small range, let's assume I'm doing a smaller range maybe for this, it's going to be less uh, for each garment because of course it's simply less work to be done. The marking is um, a very complicated schematic that is made up of all the pattern pieces to give a guide to the cutter on how to most efficiently cut the garments. Um, and a lot of times companies will outsource this, uh, the creation of the marking that will mean that it has um, an extra, extra price. However, if your company does in-house marking, you might not have any extra except for maybe a little bit more because of course someone you have to pay an employee to do it. Um, so $1, again, if this was a particularly larger um, run of a garment would be perfectly fine to assume that would be the added cost to cover the marking for these pattern pieces. Okay, so let's add it all up. Our to total labor costs, and we have 325 here. Let me grab my little calculator. Now I can add 25 cents to $3 to start with. And then I got another 28 cents and then another 10 cents for my labels and hand tags. And then let's scroll down and get our labor costs in there. We have um, $2, $7, and then another $2. So this together is $4, so that's another $11. So my total cost to make this garment is $14.63. So we're going to put that down here. Okay, so now I have to decide my markup. So like I said, I want to keep this price point low. Um, and I'm going to rely on this being a large run and a lot of units will be sold. And that's where I'm gonna get my profit. So I'm gonna have a little bit more of like a fast fashion um, model to this. So I'm not gonna use a full, um, you know, 200% markup for my retail and then wholesale. What I'm gonna do is, so let's, um, maybe I'll do 150%. for my wholesale. So this will be my wholesale. We can round that up to 22. So wholesale, you can put down here at um, 22. No, I said it has suggested retail, but you may as well put uh, wholesale and then retail right next to it because I'm going to ask you for both of that in the question sections anyway. And so my markup here, so my percentage for my markup is um, 150%. And that is going to now make my retail you know, $33. which solidly puts it in a low price range, good for a lower price point. 
So again, I'm going to rely on my volume of uh, garments to uh, get me my profit. And again, that would be my strategy for my markup. I wanna sell a lot at a lower price point because again, this is gonna be, it's silly, it's funny, it's not, you know, um, it's for a younger customer, they don't have a lot of money, um, it's not too formal, so on and so forth. So that's how you're gonna fill out your cost sheet and then of course just answer your questions on the side um, in addition. So hopefully that clears up any sort of confusion you might have about filling out your cost sheet. All right guys, see you later, bye-bye.